cutting Danshiki. And we all know how Danshiki looks like. And we are going to do um, a heat transfer that will have that skull image on the front. After the, after the normal cutting, we now send it to where we make the uh, skull heat transfer or flock. Now, um, the areas of measurement we need are one, the shoulder and the sleeve, the neck and the top length. We don't need our chest. Unlike our regular senator tops, we have to measure chest, everything, right? Now, what is the reason we should not use the chest? By the virtue of the clothes, the clothes is a free outfit. It's very free. So when you use your shoulder plus sleeve, it's way bigger than your chest measurements. Because the shoulder and sleeve are being caught together. The shoulder and sleeve are being caught together. So now you have two options. You have to ask your customer where he wants the sleeve to reach after sewing. He might point his normal short sleeve or a bit higher or lower. However, fine. You have to take the shoulder measurements, in, um, including the sleeve at once. And you have to start from the center back of your neck this way. Measure across to wherever the person wants it to be. So, but then, if you are confused on how to take this measurement, the simplest way as well you can go is by taking your normal shoulder measurement, then measure your normal short sleeve, and then make sure that the sleeve is being added twice because of the left sleeve and the right sleeve. So, for example, if my shoulder is 18 and my short sleeve is 9, that means my shoulder is 18 and my sleeves are 18 as well. 9 inches for right, 9 for left, making it to be 18, 18. So adding the both together, you have 36, which is way bigger than my chest. Are we together? 36 times 2 is like 40, um, 42, uh, 72, right? Fine. So then in folding, you are to consider your shoulder measurement, sleeve measurement, and then... Um, the inch of the sleeve folding. So here, we have to consider the shoulder of 18. That's 9, right? Then, sleeve of what? 9. Okay. So we have nice sleeve. So, no more allowance left for folding. It is either we reduce the sleeve or we add on up on the sleeve for 4G. Are we together? So you choose any of them, either you reduce the sleeve or you add turn for 4G. So in such situation, since it's not my customer, I will do turn for 4G. I will add extra two inches later after cutting. So the folding is not included here. But if the material was enough, I would have added extra two again for folding. But here because my end point, I will not try to do my whole markings. Are we together? Fine. So since the fabric is in this form, I will split into two equal parts before I start cutting. So I see for the front and back now, right? Uh -huh. Then I am folding into two in this form. Then fold into two equal parts. The material name is called Irish. Irish. You can use any material of your choice to sew this danshiki. It can be bell, it can be cashmere, it can be any material you want, depending on how much the customer is paying or is um, able to pay. The more the more quality material you have, the costlier the fabric. Then fold, iron out the areas you know you need, and leave the rest. So now, after this, the next I will do now is to mark out my baseline. You mark out your baseline this way. Add extra four inches here for the hem or the folding of the top. Part three here. Mark it twice to make sure it's um stretched at the shoulder area. 
Then also make sure that you have your top properly marked out this way. So here becomes my working area. Ignore here. Now, the next thing we do is to slope or slant. Now, that shiki slope is not slanting. is way bigger than the normal senator ass feet. Now, if you seem, or if you tend not to slant it the way it should be, the screw will be hanging. It will fall on the person's body. It will, it will be popping up, looking like um, smaller size ass feet. It should fall on the person's body. Now, the more you slant, the more it falls. If you slope by two inches, two and a half, three, it will still be okay, but it will fall the way it will look like a normal shoulder and sleeve. The sleeve will be hanging all the way this way, and there will be kind of gap between the sleeve and the body. But the sleeve should fall and relax on the person's body. So now, the inch I use in sloping is four inches. Four is what I use in sloping. Four inches slope. Then... I will slope out slightly to this point. Then here I know that the round sleeve is always bigger. It's a free wear. So you can double your normal sleeve. If your sleeve is 14, if your sleeve is, um, let's say, 14 by 2 now, right? That's 7. You can do 9 or 10. However, it's a free outfit. So at this, at this damp part, I will mark at 10 for the sleeve opening. Then plus one inch or one and a half for the closure or for the closing. Eleven and a half. After this, next I will do is my neck. My neckline I have is neckline of um, 17. Divide by 6, you have 2.83, 2.78 or thereabout. So I will mark a 2.5. Reasons being that in your neck divisions, you don't use the whole value you have gotten division in marking because you are here to trim and work on the neck. Okay. So if you, if you seem to want to be perfect in your neck calculations, once you, minus, once you divide your neck by 6, deduct 0 0.3 from the answer you got, and mark the lesser value for the width, then add half to it, and mark for the depth. So if you divide your neck 17 by 6, you have 2.73 there about, then you not, don't, don't mark 2.7 or 73, mark a 2.5, lesser value than the original answer you got. Because of the fact of you are trimming your neck before you pipe or finish your clothing. If you mark at 2.73, the neck will tend to spill over to 18 neck or 18 and a half neck, making it to be bigger than how it should be. So this is the trick I use on all my neck cuttings. I deduct 0 0.3 from all neck divisions I have, mark the, mark the letter value, and then use for the which was answer. So 2.73, I use 2.5 to mark for the width. Then add half to this, that's three. I'll mark for my depth of the neck. After this, connect the lines to get an angle 90 this way. Then, with the help of your hip curve or arm hook curve, other master, anyone you have, you, you fine tune it this way, make balance it this way, and then connect with the curve in this form. Then after this, if you want to cut it straight this way, it's okay. If you still want to come in a bit before cutting, it's still okay. But what I normally do is I slant it a bit inwards. Now this can come in by four or three inside to give it that shape of fitting. And then from here, you go down straight to this point. Though here will not be a sharp angle that way, it will be a curvy angle. You can just use this one to fine tune it. Maybe something of this nature you'll fine tune in this form. Are we together? Yes. The point is drawn. Any question? Any confusion? Any question? Four. So that the two will fall well. Some people can still do five. It's four well. So make a cut, Abby. Sandra. So I'm um, later on, we cut two inches for turn up and join to the sleeve. No matter turn up now, we do turn up and join here. Then lock it up, yeah.
Oh, I can't. Back. By four, four inches. Where's here? Four, four inches. Equal raising. Four, four inches. Connect. Then the back neck goes in by half an inch wider than the front neck. So you can just mark this one straight, then mark half inch back, and then place it in that position and slope it this way. Half inch wider from the original straight line backwards. The back neck depth remains 1.5. With the help of your pattern master as well, or arm hook off, you place this way and connect. And we are done. Any confusion? Yeah? But the term of Go ahead. The term of, uh, the same guideline is based on the nothing on the back Yes. The same guy they're having to inside. Yes. That half inch back neck. So cut exact size this way. Cut exact size this way. And then still do your um, shoulder trimming, your balancing this way. So see what I will do for you. I will reduce this a bit so that why I put the two inches, it will not um, affect this sleeve. Or maybe after you must have um, joined, then you now do the trimming. Uh -huh. I think it's still okay this way. Let's leave it this way. After joining, then this is the you mark it the chalk as well to differentiate front and back. Then we are to go and pick the image somewhere here. Then come back and do the sewing, which uh, we are doing. Uh, so you call by us and go 45 degrees. Simple way to do it is to mark a baseline. You mark a baseline here. From here is angle 90 now. Then from here is 45. Half of this whole division. And the minimum neckline you have is 21. That's the minimum you have, 21. So you mark your 21. Then you can just decide to mark your baseline somewhere here. And then 2.5 is the recommended size you have to use so that the pattern will be bold enough and not too small. 2.5 then connect in this form connect in this form and then slit out bear in mind that shiki does not have back facing no front facing but the shoulder will be sewn like a top stitch shirt the shoulder will be top stitched like a packet shirt so no need for front facing or back facing you have to stitch it like a top, like a normal packet shirt at the shoulder area, and then do your piping. You can either decide to have um, a shoulder zip or a flap at the center. But by the style we are making, we are going to have an image on the chest. So no need for flap. It's going to be shoulder zip. So we are focusing only one, and then zip on the other side. So bias is formed. And we are done with the dashiki. Um, um, cutting. Any question?